Hey, what is going on, you guys? It is Gawa here today, and welcome back to yet another Gawa Deck Tech video. Today in this video, we're going to be looking at my beautiful first ever equipment apart equipment partner partner deck. Jeez, I can't even speak. We got the Arden, and we have Rog Rock, son of Rog. Um, so basically, the whole thing with these two is basically build up your board state, get some crazy equipment and just equip them for free because of Rog's abil or Arden's ability here. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may attach any number of aura and equipment you control to target permanent or player. And Rog here, you can see behind the kawaii stuff, First Strike Menace Trample. Yeah, um, pretty, pretty good pairing in my opinion. Probably the best for Rog, but uh, yeah. So let's get into the the lands here so basically i did it up in a pile kind of different from my other deck tech so it's much easier to see so to start off we have five basic uh mountains so you know just standard we have seven basic planes um this deck consists of 30 lands so so onto the utility lands now we have a battlefield forge we have a Fury Calm Snarl, a Spectator Seating. We have a Boris Garrison, Slayer's Stronghold, Temple of Triumph, Needle Leverage Pathway that turns into the one with the, the plain side, so you can play either or. Rugged Prairie, Ancient Den, we have Buried Ruin, Rogue's Passage, we have Exgard Armory. I think I said that right. Uh, Sun Home Fortress of the Legion. Clifftop Retreat. Command Tower. The Great Furnace. Sundown Pass. And Sacred Foundry. So most of these lands, we have 18 special specialty lands. Like I'll call them utility specialty lands in this deck. So basically the whole point of it is all of them tap for either red or... Um, white which are the commander colors or they give you things such as you know give your creatures double strike give your creatures um unblockable like stuff like that with like rogue passage and stuff so uh to start off we have 20 creatures here and we have two planeswalkers so planeswalkers we have nahari so you can create a white core creature with her you look at the top six card of your library may reveal a warrior equipment card from among them put into your hand and then her, like, minus three is deals damage to her creature or planeswalk. You have twice the number of equipment you control. So that's crazy because there's, like, 31 equipments in this deck. And it's two on top of that. So that's just crazy. We got Jessica here. Just the simple fact that you can choose a target until the end of your next turn. The creature would deal combat damage. It does triple that instead. So, and she gets counters for how many times you've casted your commander from the command zone. So we have Saram. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle, draw a card. Pretty good. We have this one here. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it was enchanted or equipped, return it to its owner's hand. So it's good. So if like someone comes out and kills Rog, as long as you got like a piece of equipment or anything on him, you'll just bring him back to your hand. Cadiz is another one that I've seen that people run with the commander with Rog, just because whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to an opponent, deals that much damage to each other opponent. So if I'm not mistaken, I don't think that's commander damage. I think the person who you hit with Rog will get done commander damage, but not the actual, um, not everyone at the table there. So we have Armored Skyhunter, one of my favorite cards in this deck. So it's whenever you, whenever he attacks, you look at the top six of your library and you put an aura equipment card from under the battlefield. And if it's put on that way, like if an equipment's put on the battlefield or an aura, you can basically just attach it for free. Pure Steel Paladin, whenever an equipment enters the battlefield or your control, you may draw a card, and equipment you control have zero equip class, as long as you have three or more artifacts. Sun Titan, just to return um, some permanence to the battlefield. We have Denitha, she just is there for the, the aura and the equipment spells. One colorless less. Uh, Bastion Protector, commander creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and have indestructible. It's also another really cool card. Basically, at any time, you just cast Stone Hewer Giant, and you can just tap them and search a library for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield. And you can attach that to a creature as well. <clears throat> we have Ginger Brute here. Really cool card, just because he can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. The reason I put him in there, because sometimes, 
when you're just slowly building up Rograk, you can you need like lands just say to like cast some of your spells. So I just take Ginger Brute and I put like Sword of the Animus on it, where basically you can um, search a library for a basic land card. So I basically just throw it on to Ginger Brute and then pay the one into it. So I just it's like a one for one's fair trade, and I end up getting more lands in return. So he's a really cool card. Ginger Brute's cool. He's he's probably the new the newest addition to the deck. We have uh, Rayev. So whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped tax gains double strike. So just another double strike thing. This one gives um, plus two plus zero for each equipment attached to the creature, and you you can pay zero rather than pay the equip cost for the first equip ability. Uh, we have Relic Seeker. He's another good one. He's renowned. So when he comes renowned, you search a library for an equipment card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. <clears throat> so all you do is you just deal combat damage to a player, and he becomes renowned. So. We have Stoneforge Mystic here, enters the battlefield, you may search a library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle, and then you may put an equipment card from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's, it's cool, like, if a lot of shit is going wrong and, like, your commanders keep getting, like, blown up and stuff, like, some of the higher drops, you can just pay the two to drop it for cheap, you know what I mean? Like, so, it's pretty good. We have Halvar, God of Battle, so it gives him double strike. Any combat, you may attach target or equipment aura to another creature you control. I never really use the sword side of him, but, you know. This is a kind of like a last resort type thing with uh, Waylith, because he has Trample, but whenever Waylith the Steel attacks, draw a card for each aura and equipment attached to it. So that's another thing you could put, like, instead of Ginger Brute, you could put it onto him and just swing out with that. We have a carry, the Fearless Voyager. So whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. And for a white, you may unattach equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap the creature and it gains indestructible. So it's cool because if you have like one single thing, like, you know, that just ups it by like one or two, just tap the white to remove an equipment from like Rog and just gives them indestructible. So yeah, a lot of times too, like I'll give, um, I'll, I'll explain it when I get to the actual equipment. So next we have Godo, Mandate Warlord. So he comes into play, search a library for an equipment card, put it into play. I do actually run Helm of the Host, so that's like one of the only few combos in this deck, but it's a good combo nonetheless. We have Tiana Ship Caretaker. So whenever an ore equipment you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return it that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So that's really good. And then my... The second newest pickup for this deck, or latest pickup, was the Silent Arbiter for four. No more than one creature can attack each combat. No more than one creature can may block each combat. So that's good, too. Just, like, you know, if you're running, like, uh, Rog, and you're trying to swing out on someone, and they're, like, they keep blocking you, like, just chump blocking everything. So it's, like, it's good because only one, so no one can, like, double block you or anything. So next thing we have is our spells, I'll say. So this is like, this consists of 15, I do believe, 15 or so. So that's his enchantment, sorceries, instance, all that. So we have open the armory, search a library for an, an aura or equipment card, reveal it and put it to your hand, then shuffle your library. We have dispatch, tap target creature, and if you control three or more artifacts, you can exile that creature. So that's really good for one colorless. We have the... Wear and tear, so destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment for pretty cheap, actually. We have this card here. This card's a funny-ass card, man. It's called Balance. It's just each player sacrifices enough lands to equalize the number of lands all players control. That player who controls the fewest lands cannot sacrifice any in this way. All players then equalize cards in hand and the creatures in play. Just a stupid card. It's a funny card. Everyone gets pissed at me when I just haul out Balance, but, you know. Path to Exile, just remove a card from the game. Blasphemous Act, just deal 13 damage to every creature and your creatures can help you pay for it. That's, the thing is with this, it's it's okay, but like with the amount of creatures in there, like that's one card I'd probably get rid of just because, you know. Uh, Swords of Plowshares, we have Boris Charm that gives, you can deal four damage or you can put double strike on a uh, creature you control. Smother and Tithe, classic. Pay two or get a treasure. Timely Ward. Uh, you may cast a spell as though it had flash. If it targets a commander, enchant creature has indestructible. So it's really good if you're going to get blown up. You just go boom right onto Rog. It gives them indestructible. All that glitters. Enchant creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantments. 
you control. That's really good. Fighter class. Uh, enters the battlefield to your life for an equipment card. Put it in your hand, then shuffle. Level 2. Equip abilities are 2 less to activate. And whenever a creature you control attacks up to one target creature, blocks this combat if able. We have Steel, Sa Steel Shaper's Gift. Search library for an equipment card. Reveal that card. Put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. We have my beautiful misprinted Sigarda's Aid. You may cast auras and equipment spells as though they had flash, and whenever a equipment has a battlefield under control, you may attach a target creature. Don't know how this is a one drop. It's actually stupid, but you know. We have Fury Storm. So this is when you cast a spell you can copy each time you've casted your commander from the command zone this game. You may choose new targets, so you know you could just do something like this next one here, Generous Gift, and just choose a bunch of targets and destroy a bunch of things. So yeah. Um, and then we have Slash the Ranks. This is like probably my favorite board wipe for this um, deck. So you destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commanders. That's really good. So, yeah. Now let's get into the actual nitty gritty of this deck. And that is the equipment. So the equipment is heavy hitters. There's like 30 equipment or something in this deck. So yeah, let's get into it. So we have Masterwork of Inguinity, oh my god, In I can't say that word, man, holy shit. <laughs> you may have, uh, it enter the battlefield as a copy of an equipment on the battlefield, so that's really good. We have Shadow Spear, equip creature gets plus one, plus one, has trample and lifelink, and you pay one, permanent your opponent's control, lose hexproof and indestructible. We have Mana Crypt, again, this is kind of a budget uh, ROG deck. The only reason Mana Crypt's in here is just because... I own the card, so I put it in pretty much every single one of my decks, but you can take it out and replace it with pretty much anything else. Another equipment if you really wanted to. So yeah, that's just a less budget upgrade version. Uh, probably the most expensive thing in this, the equipment in this deck is the Commander's Plate. So equipped creature gets plus two plus three and has protection from each color that's not in your uh, Commander's color identity. So Rog would have protection from everything except for white and red. Swift of Boots. Gives them Hexproof and Haste. Usually I put that or I put um, uh, that or the other the other boots, Lightning Greaves, onto Arden to keep him protected. Talisman of Conviction. We have a Cauldra Complete. Gives a plus five, plus five, and a whole bunch of different stats. Umazawa's Jet is another crazy one, man. Just because you every time you deal combat damage... To a player, you can put, like, counters on it. And then you can do stuff like just equip creature gets plus two, plus two. Or target creature gets minus two, minus one, minus one. So if you have enough counters, you can just pretty much wipe your whole board with that. Uh, we have Whipper Silk Cloak. Equip creature is unblockable. Equip creature as Shroud. Beautiful Black Blade Reforged. You, they get plus one, plus one for each land you control. Argumentian Armor. Equip creature gets plus six, plus six. And when a equip creature attacks, destroy target permanent. Sword of Animist, Equip Creature gets plus one, plus one. And that's the one I was talking about with um, Ginger Brute. We have Mask of Memory. Whenever Equip Creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw two cards. So it's another good little card draw for a one or two drop equipment. Blood Forge Battle Axe. Just basically every time you attack, you make uh, another copy of Blood Forge Battle Axe. And it gives plus two, plus two. We got a Soul Ring. We got a Boris Signet. We have Sunforger, so it gives them plus four, plus zero, but then you attach it for a red and a white, and you can search your library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less, and then you can play it without paying its mana cost. Next, we have Basilisk Collar, gives them Death Touch and Lifelink. We have the Two-Handed Axe, and whenever equipped creature attacks, double its power, and target creature you control gains double strike. Golem Skin Gauntlets, Equip Creature gets plus one, plus zero for each equipment attached to it. Fellow R Stone, Helm the Host for uh, the Godo combo. Needle Sis, Living Weapon, Equip Creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact or and or enchantment you control. Oh shit, there goes everything there. Um, shit, sorry about that, technical difficulties. All right. Locks it on Warhammer, gets plus three, plus three, and Trample and Lifelink, or plus three, plus zero, sorry. Uh, Lizard Blades, this gives uh, Double Strike. Hammer and Azan, and, uh, or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control. You may attach that equipment to the target, and gets plus two, plus zero, and has Indestructible. 
Sword of Feast and Famine gives it plus two, plus two, and protects from black and from green. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, discard a card. That player discards a card, and you untap all lands. I mean, it's good. I mean, if you have Commander's Plate, you're going to get protection from that anyways, but that's, like, just good if you don't end up having it. Yeah, Lightning Graves. Equipped creature has Haste and Shroud. Basically, just give that to Arden. Give it to, like, Rog if he comes in because he doesn't have Haste, just say. But then after, just free equip just to Arden. Just so you can keep him protected with Shroud. We have Maul of Skyclaves. It enters the battlefield, and it gives plus two, plus two, and has Flying and First Strike. Next one is Colossus Hammer. Colossus Hammer gives it plus ten, plus ten, and loses Flying. But it's just crazy because the equip cost is eight for it, and then you just, with Arden, you just do it for free. So it's kind of nuts. And the last card is Arcane Signet. All right, well, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Um, I'm glad to be still able to make deck techs for you guys. I do have a couple decks being built. I have a Thali and a Gitrog monster, and I have the Bernard Ginger Sculptor that I'm currently building, and I'm very excited for that deck. But uh, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the deck. Hopefully you guys build it. If you guys have any suggestions on things that I should add, take out to this deck, always let me know because I love hearing your guys' feedback. And remember, if you're new around here, be sure to drop a sub and join that Discord link down in the bio. We got members joining and, you know, slowly building the community on there. But yeah, I thank you guys, like I said, for watching. And remember, if it ain't Gawa Gang, it's no gang. I love y'all. Stay safe, stay blessed, and peace.